I'm Steven Pavletic. I'm head of the Graft versus Host Disease program at the Intramural National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, Maryland. And I'm now here at the American Society of Hematology annual convention in uh, Orlando, Florida. And uh, I'm really, truly enjoying uh, this opportunity to uh, talk to the audience of the GVHD Hub um, organization. My intention for this uh, short conversation has been to address uh, the progress in uh, chronic graft versus host disease, an area where we know a number of uh, very exciting things have been uh, going on recently in the uh, realm of biology, in the realm of uh, identifying new th targets for therapies, uh, new treatments, and uh, it's been dramatically changed over the last 15 years. So my goal for today is uh, to put things in perspective. Now, there are a number of very exciting uh, um, presentations and developments, including at this ASH, but uh, the field has dramatically changed over the last 15 years. Chronic graft versus host disease is a form of autoimmune, alloimmune, uh, uh, systemic uh, in disease that is man-made, so it's very unique. It didn't exist in nature before we started doing allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplantation uh, for the treatment of uh, lethal diseases, usually, of course, diseases of the hematopoietic system uh, or the bone marrow. With the increasing survival of these patients, uh, around 2004, community realized that we need, need to do something about chronic graft versus host disease problem. It's been profoundly affected quality of life uh, and uh, existence of patients that uh, otherwise have been cured from the underlying uh, uh, hematologic cancer. So in 2004, 2005, we had this uh, first NIH uh, consensus conference that uh, I was co-chairing with a, a number of colleagues around the country and internationally. It was an amazing uh, multi-stakeholders uh, effort. Uh, over following decade, in 2014, we had another consensus conferences where we could look back uh, and we could uh, assess uh, the criteria that we proposed. Those are very important criteria uh, for diagnosis of GVHD, for, for uh, scoring of uh, therapeutic response, how to develop biomarkers, how to conduct clinical trials. We have to remember that uh, 15 years ago or 10 years ago, nobody wanted to work with us. We had this horrible disease, we had this uh, unmet need, but uh, there were no uh, pathways or structure to do these clinical trials. So the result of this uh, wonderful communal effort, you know, where we had uh, scientists, uh, physicians, regulatory agencies, industry, everybody around, you know, patients, uh, advocacy groups, result that we really take a major sign of success of these uh, efforts and in research and better understanding of biology is that in 2017, uh, for the first time in history, Food and Drug Administration granted a regulatory approval to an agent uh, for the treatment of uh, steroid refractory chronic graft versus host disease. And specifically, that was made possible based on these National Institutes of Health uh, uh, criteria that we developed as a community. Now we have tools for assessing. And over the last three years, you know, we are moving in a totally new era. Everything is dramatic, dramatically changed. Uh, uh, suddenly we have a long list of very exciting clinical trials. Some of those have been presented here uh, uh, at ASH, uh, targeting different points of uh, pathophysiology of chronic graft versus host disease. We are much better now in understanding or trying rationally to uh, attack this disease in a more effective and less toxic ways. In the old days, for example, we were just giving lots of steroids, you know, very immunosuppressive drugs. Everybody hates them. Uh, they're very effective, but uh, physicians uh, uh, don't like the side effects they're seeing. Patients hate them, so it's globally immunosuppressive. Now we have more targeted drugs. They're targeting specifically uh, T cell signaling. Uh, yeah, even uh, at this ash, you, uh, there are a number of presentations or posters on JAK inhibitors for acute and cr 
I'm talking now about chronic graft versus host disease. That's a chronic disease. You know, it's an outpatient. Um, uh, there are other uh, T cell signaling pathways that could be blocked. Uh, uh, so I mentioned JAK inhibitors, uh, I can mention ROC inhibitors, T cells are an incredibly important pathway. I mentioned uh, ibrutinib and there are others coming out. Um, they're non specific or, uh, 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 or I would say better, better targeting of uh, innate immune system, so like neutrophils, uh, with neutrophil elastase inhibitors and others. So in summary, uh, the field, field has so dramatically changed that uh, uh, um, we are now facing really uh, uh, a dilemma how to prioritize all these things, you know. And I think this, uh, this ash uh, in 2019, I think it's in the crucial point of, of uh, the, the, the field of chronic GVHD, we are actually embarking on something that we are calling now third NIH consensus, but it's uh, really with a different goal. We are not now developing tool or tools or toolboxes, you know, to, to, to uh, assess you know, disease and measure responses, or those need still some refinements. Uh, but really we want to turn tables over and say, okay, now we know so much more about biology, you know, we have all these wonderful molecules at our hands, we have a wonderful community that wants to work together nationally, internationally. How can we now fundamentally change our paradigms of treatment that really when you look at the guidelines, how you treat chronic graft versus host disease, it still didn't change. We have so many options, but basically, first-line therapy, corticosteroids, numerous uh, side effects, second-line therapy, there are some new drugs coming, but really no standard. It's a big debate. And then we still don't have uh, ways of uh, uh, standardized prevention, although there are some ways of preventing, you know, but then we are entering some other problems, so there's no standard. And uh, we are particularly interested in this scientific uh, uh, and you know, hematology and transport community uh, to intervene at a point what we call preemptive uh, treatment of chronic graft versus host disease. Doesn't exist in practice. Uh, there are a few very early preliminary trials, you know, showing, but what I'm talking about is intervening uh, between most critical time when um, clinical chronic graft versus host disease develops between three and six months after allergenic transplantation, try to identify high-risk patients or maybe develop some biomarkers that we can identify patients who are starting to develop this disease and then intervene with these drugs before the disability, difficult symptoms and full-blown disease develops. Uh, we think uh, we have tools at our hands. Uh, we, we still need to do some research, uh, to, to, uh, and including uh, uh, preemptive clinical trials. So this is uh, the field how the layout in now in 2020. There are some amazing new drugs. You know, uh, uh, the community is moving into really trying to change these paradigms, uh, prevention, preemption, treatment. And then uh, there is a fourth aspect I didn't uh, specifically mention, but there are some rare, uh, very disabling manifestations of chronic GVHD that we are really not as effective at all. I would include this uh, pulmonary manifestation, so lung chronic GVHD, where really there are no new drugs or effective treatments. Uh, there are some uh, manifestations uh, with the uh, joint fibrosis that's irreversible, uh, irreversible uh, eye damage, uh, or uh, uh, irreversible damage to uh, peripheral nerves, where it's causing uh, patients uh, tremendous uh, problems with cramps, with pains and aches, and about three, 30 to 40 percent of these patients uh, 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 in chronic GVG have different types of these kind of symptoms. Where, so I'm mentioning all this, uh, where we as a field are going, where the needs are. Um, no, they, they, this ash has been, again, I said, uh, I would say inflection in the whole uh, situation because uh, we are actively discussing uh, some very exciting new approaches and, and trials uh, 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 that we would like to pursue over the next year or two. And uh, I'm looking forward to talk to you about those uh, next time we meet.